Yo, what's up guys? Grim here. So in this video, I kind of wanted to teach you a little bit about sextants. Um, I went to go make this video a few times now about um, sextant blocking, but it's just really hard to explain about blocking without first understanding what a sextant is, all about all of the mods and everything like that. So this video is going to be dedicated to teaching about how the modifiers work, which ones are good, which ones are bad, kind of like when you want to really use like all of your sextants on like one mod and stuff like that. So I'm going to get into that and then the next video will be about blocking because breaking them two up is just going to make it really like way more easy to understand. So first off, what is a sextant? Um, a sextant is a currency item that drops only in maps. So the white cartographer sextant um, drops in tiers 1 to 15, um, which is white maps, yellow maps and red maps. Um, the yellow ones obviously drop only in yellow maps, so tier 6 to 15, um, also in red maps as well. And then the red ones only drop in maps that are red, so you'll see here tier 11 to 15. So now we know where they drop. Um, there's another cheesy, cheesy way to kind of um, upgrade your sextants. Um, you can trade 3 to 1 and get the next tier up. However, this isn't very efficient and um, you can generally just sell the lower tier on PoE trade and buy the higher one um, at a much better rate. The three to one isn't very worth it. So, now that we know these colors, um, I'll explain quickly how the colors work. So basically, um, if you have a section up here, a white one, um, these ones can only be used on white colored maps. So as you can see here, these are white. If I try and use it on a yellow map, it just won't work. So, um, however, the yellow ones, they can be used on yellow maps, but they can also be used on white ones. So you can kind of uh, mix and match that. However, this isn't really worth it if you've got um, if you're trying to sex on a white map and you have the white sections You should just use those instead because they're generally cheaper So in terms of pricing these ones generally hover around 1 to 1.5 C These ones about 2 to 2.5 and then obviously the red ones are very expensive at 4 They cost 4 C generally or the whole league. Maybe they'll go down a little bit, but um Yeah, so when do you want to be using them and should you use them? Um, yeah, you should definitely be using them. Um, however, I don't think sextants are worth it at all um, using even one without using blocks, which I'll get into in the next video. Um, not long to wait now, guys. Um, but in terms of red sextants, I never use these. Um, I've used them in a couple of videos for the memes, but um, they cost too much and I don't think they're worth it ever, even with blocks. So yeah, that's kind of the down low on where you should be using them. So, But these two use, yeah, for sure. And then this one, not so much. So in terms of sextanting, um, you'll notice that uh, the, the outside of the map has a lot of white maps, the inside a lot of yellow, and then obviously the center is a lot of red. And the reason we don't go into the red, well one of the reasons, is because you'd have to use a ton of red sextants, which I just said are not really worth it. Because they're so expensive. So yeah, moving on. So what does a sextant do? So what a sextant does is it adds an additional modifier to the map, which is generally going to increase the amount of monsters on the map, which is very powerful. So you can see this one up here, 30% increased magic pack size. So what this will do is it'll take all the magic monsters in the map and you'll get 30% more to each of those packs, which is really cool. Um, so you can see this ring here. Basically what this ring means is that everything, so all the maps in this ring will be influenced by this sextant modifier. So if I run a shaped iceberg, it will also have this mod on it. Or shaped strand, sand, anything like that. So yeah, make sure the ring is on the maps that you want to run. Um, you'll see here it says three uses remaining. So the way sextants work is that once you put one on, you have three goes at it. So basically, um, it's got like three charges. I can run this map three times with 30% increased magic pack size. So whenever you're like trying to evaluate the map by map costs, you should take however many sections you did, add it up to chaos and divide it by three. And that'll give you how much kind of like investment you've put into your map. So another really important thing to know is that you can grab a section, say you don't like magic monsters, you can roll over it and get a new mod. Um, you will like waste your other section, but you can then kind of like not have to run that map and roll over it and re-roll it and try and get a better one. So the idea is that you stack all the good mods and you roll over the bad ones. So that's kind of all the basics you really need to know about sextants. So I'm going to dive straight into which modifiers are the best and which are the worst. So I'll bring up a 
spreadsheet here. I'll have a link to this in the description below, guys. But um, basically what this spreadsheet is, is it's all of the sextant modifiers currently in the game. Um, there may maybe there's some new ones in 3.1, but I haven't encountered them. They'd have to be really rare. I've used a ton of sextants, so I'm pretty sure this is all of them, to my knowledge. But if you've found one which isn't in this list, make sure you post in the description or below, or the comments or whatever, and I'll put it into the video. So straight up, you'll notice you've got some um, color coding going on here. Um, so the green ones are the good mods. You want to be running these all the time. They're fantastic. Um, yellow is kind of case by case. And then red is kind of like, that's the gross stuff, boys. We don't want that. So I'm going to quick kind of go over these in um, a little bit of detail here uh, and explain to you why ones are good and why ones are bad. Okay, so if it says additional monsters, it's pretty much good already because that adds a ton of monsters to the map. Um, I haven't obviously been through a map and counted it myself, but it's about 100 to 150 um, monsters that it adds, sometimes more, sometimes less. It just basically adds a, a ton of new individual packs all around the map, and you'll notice them because they look kind of unique. Like the fire monsters are generally like these big fire golems running around. Um, so yeah, they're pretty noticeable, and you'll notice like there's going to be a lot more monsters in your map. So all of these are excellent. You're going to be getting these very often. Um, and yeah, you, you can expect to see them um, on pretty much every single map that you run. Um, they're really good. Um, the next one up is additional rare monsters for rare maps. Magic for blue, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, the point is you'll only be getting rare mons because you're going to be alking all of your maps. So this basically says additional rare monsters. Um, so an important thing to note about this one is um, I've been through a map and... When it says additional rare monsters, what it actually does is it takes that rare monster, it puts it in the map, but it also puts a pack of white monsters around it as well. So it spawns the rare monster in with the kind of packs that go with it. I've never seen this mod roll without doing that, but if it has and someone's noticed that, let me know, because um, that's really valuable information to me. Uh, next one's up is additional strong box with 500% quantity. Um, I haven't got quantity listed, listed here, but that's not, it's not really too important because strong boxes already have a huge quantity multiplier on them. Basically, this one just adds an additional strong box to your map. However, when you work that out, it actually is three packs plus the strong box. So generally, it's worth keeping. Um, although, if you were to roll over this, I wouldn't be like against it. Like, you could roll over it, but I keep it generally whenever I roll sextants. Uh, the next one is Breach. That one's pretty self explanatory. Um, just quickly, there is an occurrence kind of bonus here, like what, um, you'll notice like how often it comes up. So this one, these all have 100, which means it's pretty common. And then this one has 10, which means it's kind of rarer. So yeah, breach is actually really common, guys. If you want more breach in your life, this is the way to do it. I run breach on almost every map. Um, it's kind of surprising. Um, well, it feels like every map. I always have them. <laughs> so yeah, breach. Um, so this one's a bit interesting. Uh, it's kind of divided in between um, a few. So when you roll this mod on the map, it's going to say 30 mysterious barrels. And when you roll that, basically what it means is that it has a chance to be um, one of five different types of barrels. Um, there's two different barrels that give you mobs, which are the worm barrels and parasite barrels. These are very good. Once you break the barrel, they're going to spawn a mob. So it basically just says like 30 more mods, sorry, mobs. And... Um, it feels like a lot more than that, honestly. So I think multiple mobs come out of each barrel. But basically, um, these can spawn magic monsters, rare monsters as well, and um, they generally drop a lot of loot. Um, the other ones are bearer barrels, which basically spawn the bearers on the ground, like the volatile bearer kind of circles. Um, these drop a lot of loot as well. And then the last one, volatile, is um, explosives. Um, they blow up. And the there is one other one here. Um, wealthy, but you'll notice this one has a 5% chance, sorry, 5 chance to, um, it's not percentage, it's just 5 chance occurrence to spawn, so it's super rare, but I've gotten this one before, and it just drops a ton of loot, um, just loot everywhere, lots of currency, tons, yeah, so it's really good, so that's kind of how the barrels work, so it's 20, 20, 25, um, a split, so yeah, when you get mysterious barrels, I generally keep it, but, um, they can be a little bit dangerous, I've shield charged into a pack of barrels and died instantly, um, so that was interesting. Um, this one is really important to know. Additional traders. When you roll this, um, you, you need to get the boys in, guys, because this is the nuts one. I've made a video about it before. Uh, you can check that out on the channel. 
So basically what this one does is it adds huge packs of monsters, like massive amounts of monsters, and these monsters will fight the other monsters. So basically what it does is it clumps up all the monsters on the map into one big ball, and these monsters drop tons of loot, um, tons of currency, everything. But why it's important that they all clump up is because what you can do is you can save your beyond maps that you roll when you're rolling your map pool. So you get them. Um, and then you put those in the device. You get some Azuri fragments, put those in the device as well. You got your boys in, so you got a full party. You run the map with a Vile Winds Prophecy on it. And beyond on the map as well. So you've got double beyond, Vile Winds, all the boys, and Azuri fragments. You go into the map. You wait for the Vile um, Winds um, Tornado to pop. And then you jump in, you one-shot the packs, and you'll get like 10 six links. Um... So yeah, that's pretty dumb. Because of the amount of loot it drops, it, it's ridiculous. Um, I'll have a bit of a compilation of me doing some Vile Winds maps. But um, when you get this mod, you need to capitalize. You need to capitalize straight away. You don't want Strongbox. You just want additional monsters everywhere. Um, more monsters, more loot. So yeah, make sure you get all monsters, uh, additional traders, stack the hell out of it, all the boys. Yeah. So let's move into um, the yellow sextant mods here. Okay, so these ones are kind of like case by case. Um, sometimes you want to run them, sometimes you don't. Um, for this one, 20% um, quality for maps. If you're chiseling your map, to my knowledge, this does not stack with chisel. So basically what it does is it adds 20% quality to your map, obviously. But if the map already has 20%, then it does nothing. So um, this one, if you're chiseling maps, roll over it. If you're not, it can be quite good, kind of. Like 20% quality is like 20% more quantity. I think I'd rather have the monsters always, to be honest though, so I roll over this every single time, or sometimes I block it, which you'll learn how to do in the next video. Next up, Invasion Boss. Um, so an Invasion Boss basically means it adds this uh, really um, obnoxious boss to the map, and it's surrounded by a few packs. Um, so this is really rippy, it can kill you very easily, there's countless ones which are very dangerous, um, but yeah, basically... It doesn't add that many monsters, and the boss doesn't really drop that much loot. So I roll over this whenever I get it as well. Next up, Crafting Master. So if you need Crafting Master, this can be quite a good one. Um, it can add like Tora, um, Haku, and all that kind of stuff. Um, however, it doesn't add additional monsters, so when you're putting that Sexton in, you're literally paying for a Crafting Master. So there's other ways to do this with prophecies. It's just better to use the prophecy and roll over this and get more monsters on your sextants. So that's why it's here. You can use it if you want, but I don't like it. Um, this one's a bit controversial. I don't really like it, but I can see why people do. So 30% more magic monsters um, on the map. What will, but it's basically what that means is, so if I have seven packs of magic monsters, right? And each pack has 10 mobs in it. This will increase those seven packs by 30%. So 30% of 70, um, I don't know, I'm not good at math, but hey, that's like 25 mobs or something like that. Whereas these ones add like 100 mobs, like that's not worth it for me. Um, like I know magic monsters drop plus one maps, but a lot of the time I feel like it's just better to roll over this and just get more monsters flat out anyway. Um, also these uh, additional ones can draw um, spawn magic monsters as well. So this one just doesn't feel worth it. Uh, if you guys really like it, let me know why, and um, I'd be really interested in that. Similarly, with um, to the other mod that we just talked about, um, additional mirrored rare monsters. Um, this one basically um, spawns in um, a mirror of a rare monster which you're killing. Um, I've tried to test this, but when I walk through the map, it looks like the mirror monster doesn't come with white monsters. So basically, a rare pack normally comes with white monsters around it. Um, like three three packs, sometimes um, less. But this mirrored version just copies the rare mob and just adds it to the map. It doesn't give more monsters. So basically what you're paying for here is like five rare monsters, which doesn't really seem worth it to me. Again, if you guys feel differently, let me know. I'm really interested. Um, in terms of all of these ones, um, I'm not going to go into the ones which don't add monsters. The main one here, which I want to talk about, is additional physical monsters. You might be like, hey, Graham. It's more monsters, why don't you like it? Um, so basically, these mobs add proximity shield monsters to the map. And what proximity shield monsters are is basically um, monsters which have a bubble around them. And you need to be inside the bubble to damage them. And it adds a ton of them. Um, and when all the bubbles stack up, it's really hard to damage the monsters. And for a projectile build like um, ethereal knives or like a bow build or anything like that, 
when you want to kill the map really fast, you can't kill these monsters because you need to go inside the bubble. And when you're inside the bubble, the mobs can hit you and you can die. So it's kind of a really like gross one. Um, I would recommend trying it for yourself. And if you like it, then keep it because it is more monsters. But if you hate it, then roll over it or block it because I hate it. I can't stand it. I just always get rid of this. I never want to run a map with this. Um, and then you'll see like Rogue Exile and stuff like that. They're just not worth it. So moving on down here, uh, we got more monsters. We know about that already. Um, a box. Um, basically, this one will give you um, a, another box on the map, but it'll also corrupt all the others. That's not really too relevant. Sometimes it can drop more six sockets or a six link. Um, sorry, that one's that, that's um, that one here. And then this one is actually important. Um, so items dropped by unique bosses are corrupted. So um, basically, what that means is you want to get beyond on the map and then beyond on the atlas um the, the device so you want to get double beyond basically do the map with a bunch of um pack size modifiers on it from the sextants and then when the beyond bosses spawn in um because they drop so much loot you can actually get um six links because what corruptions do um is it like basically treats it as a vile orb on all the items and vile orbs can generate a lot of six sockets and six links so when you kill the um, Beyond bosses in that, it'll drop a bunch of six sockets and six links. Um, it's really important to know that the Elder Portals actually counts towards this. So if you can kind of manipulate your Atlas when you get the Sextant mod to give you the um, Elder Portals, those can drop a lot of six sockets and six links potentially as well. And then you got um, Area Contained Sana here. I'm not going to go over the red sextant mods because I don't use them myself and I couldn't really tell you how good they are or how bad they are because I just never run them. So yeah, um, Zana is good, but um, if you're trying to get map returns, I would probably keep her because you can run into the map, do her map. You basically get two maps for the price of one, which is really good. But um, in terms of min-maxing speed and all of that, Zana isn't great and I roll over her. So yeah, that's kind of like teaching you about the mods, um, about how sextants work in the early days here. Um, I'm going to go into blocking and how all that works next video, but this is kind of the base video. I really think it's important to understand what all the mods do and why you do and don't want them um, before we get into blocking them out. I think it's super important. So now you know what all the mods do, you know which ones are good, which ones are bad. Again, this will be in the description, um, a link to this. And um, in the next video, I'm going to show you how to make it so that you don't have to run any of these or even see them. And basically what that lets you do is when you're rolling sextants, you're never going to hit these bad mods, so you'll only need to use one or two instead of like five. Um, it is important to note though, you cannot roll the same sextant twice. So when you roll a map like Vault, which has six sextants on it, let's say you roll five good ones, and then you're going for the sixth, you can already see that, hey, my chances of getting the next one are getting slimmer and slimmer for each one I take out. So I'm going to go into detail on that kind of stuff in the next video. Um, hopefully you guys have learned something and you enjoy this. Um, all sextants are crazy. I think everyone should be using them if you can. Um, and they're really fun to run. I think they're actually the most fun thing in PoE. Uh, so hopefully you guys enjoy and are looking forward to the next video because then you can finally get into doing it yourself. <clears throat> so I guess I'll get, see you guys in the next one. Catch you later.